morning and welcome to worship with us here at Faith Lutheran Church in Ronan, Montana. I'm very glad that you've decided to join us. Uh, we are continuing with masked in-person worship for the time being, uh, though we are paying attention that um, the COVID cases are rising significantly in Montana and doing our best to stay safe. So I encourage you to do that throughout, uh, both in your worship and in your lives uh, throughout your week. If you do feel like uh, you would be especially compromised if you did come down with COVID, I want to remind you that worshiping online is the safest way to worship with us through this pandemic. Uh, with that being said, this is likely my last pre-recorded service, at least for a while. Um, we have th many thanks to Rod Stegy, Gordon Granley, and Craig Granley, who helped install our, um, uh, pan our, our camera in our sanctuary this week, as well as many, uh, some microphones and sound equipment, so that we can stream out our services as they happen, instead of doing the pre-recorded process that I have been up to now. I've had sort of a love-hate relationship with these videos. Um, as I may mention of, it, it, take, it is quite time consuming is, and a little bit stressful at times to find, uh, put everything together and edit it all every week. So, and thank you for your patience. Many of you have been very supportive in spite of my amateur efforts. But that being said, I give thanks to God that while we have been called upon to be distant in this time, we still can connect through video, through phone chats, through cameras, like would not have even been possible 10 years ago. So, um, in the ancient Christian writers, uh, in, uh, well, I guess not that ancient, but uh, a thousand years ago, uh, Christian writers made mention of how, in the, as reflecting them back upon, from the Dark Ages, how the gospel spread during the height of the Roman Empire, when there were roads and easy travel and communication. It was much easier for the gospel to spread then than after the fall of the Western Roman Empire. So too, I feel like this pandemic has been aided greatly by technology like this. And uh, we give thanks to God for little mercies like that, that we can still connect while we are apart. And please remember, I am praying for all of you always and uh, look forward to uh, the Christmas season and Advent season that is coming up uh, here shortly. Please take a moment and prepare your hearts for worship. We begin our service in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin. Receive your forgiveness and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have, we have not, not loved, loved you with our, our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. ourselves. For, For the, the sake, sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, Christ have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin, and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Oh, so 
Let us pray together our prayer of the day. Righteous God, our merciful Master, you own the earth and all its peoples, and you give us all that we have. Inspire us to serve you with justice and wisdom, and prepare us for the joy of the day of your coming. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our gospel lesson for today is Matthew chapter 25, verses 14 through 30. For it is as if a man, going on a journey, summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received five talents went off and at once traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave! You knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him, and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will receive in abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, Throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Here ends our gospel lesson. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This joke was shared with uh, Harvard's Wharton School of Business. A man was walking along and, uh, in, in, the country, on the, in the countryside when he comes across a shepherd who has a huge flock of sheep. Now he tells the shepherd, I will bet you $100 against one of your sheep that I can tell the exact number that is in this flock. <clears throat> the shepherd thinks, for it, thinks it over for a little bit. He's got a pretty big flock, so he says, okay. 973, the man replies. The shepherd is astonished because that is exactly right. He says, okay, I'm a man of my word. Take an animal. The man picks one up and begins to walk away. Wait, cries the shepherd. Let me have a chance to get even. Double or nothing. I can guess your exact occupation. The man says, sure. You are, an, you are an economist who works for a government think tank, says the shepherd. Amazing, responds the man. You are exactly right. But tell me, how did you deduce that? Well, the shepherd said, put down my dog and I will tell you. <laughs> this is my roundabout segue into talking about a parable, our parable for today. In it, we hear about a wealthy landowner leaving for a journey and entrusting three servants with his money. One servant with five talents, one servant with two, and the last servant with one talent. Now, this was no small amount of money, even the one talent. 
These amounts are roughly equivalent to tens of thousands of dollars in, t in modern currency. So the stakes of what they did with that money were pretty high. Of course, as we all just heard, the two servants with the higher amounts went out right away and doubled their master's money, while the third buried his one talent in the ground for safekeeping. Fearing his master's wrath, if we were to lose this sizable sum on a risky investment or a bad deal. When the master returned after a long time, he received the doubled sums from the first two servants and rewarded them with praise, saying, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Well, the third slave, on the other hand, was chastised by his master for holding on to his one talent. <clears throat> the master said, Take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. For all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. The shrewd investors in the story were treated handsomely, while the shrewd saver is promised to be thrown into the outer darkness. And read in a certain light, this parable is a capitalist dream come true. In our economic system of taking capital, trading, investing in it to grow one's wealth, and be reward, being rewarded for taking risks over those who just play it safe. This parable seems like the, just, the cap, this, just the story that capitalists want to hear. Slaves who took their master's money and doubled it were given a place of joy and celebration in the household. The slave who hoarded the gift that was entrusted to him out of fear <clears throat> of, what, of what might happen with it if he took those same risks, that guy was chastised and despised when the master returned. For those of us who work hard, save for retirement, grow our businesses and our brands, and work diligently to grow our farms and ranches, or at least hold on to them for one more year, it would seem like Jesus gets us. I, for one, started investing in the stock market out of college with the modest earnings from my first full-time job in the wake of the 08 recession, recognizing that the market was at its bottom and would likely only go up from there. Now, while I was proven right about my assessment of the markets at that time, I did not make the kind of money that these slaves did. Still, the fact that the financial risks I took on a decade ago are reflected in this parable seems like a biblical validation of my stock pur purchases. The investors, the risk takers, they are praised, while the savers, the cautious ones, they are condemned. Yet, <clears throat> to all my investment-minded friends who get excited over this parable, I must remind us all that it is a parable, and parables are never meant to be interpreted literally. Parables are stories that are always pointing us to something else. This is not a story of how to make money or commit to a biblically sound financial strategy, as tempting as that interpretation might be. It is also not a story about free markets. I feel obligated to point out that this is a story of slaves making money for their masters. In modern economic language, the story is much more akin to communist authoritarian regimes than individualistic free market systems. So, we can all rest at ease that this is not meant to be read literally. We don't literally need to become slaves, right? No, this story is about the gift of the gospel being entrusted to the disciples and how they were to think about that gift when the master went away. The good news of their salvation was given to them so that they might share it with others 
in, the, in abundantly generous ways. The gifts of the Spirit <clears throat> that accompany this process do indeed shake out like the different amounts given to the different servants. Some of us are entrusted to, with ten talents worth of spiritual gifts, others with two, and still others with one. Yet the intent behind all of these gifts is the same. They are to, meant to be shared with the world around us. The gospel does not need safekeeping. It is not intended to be buried in a hole, but instead spread far and wide. We've got to get the news out there, that good news, even if it means taking substantial risk. In 1832, Jehu Jones Jr. was the first, was ordained as the first Lutheran pastor of African descent in the United States. He was originally planning to depart as a missionary to free blacks returning to the continent of Africa in the American colony of Liberia. It's now a country, but then at that time it was our colony. However, racist, oppressive policies in his home state of South Carolina barred him from departing with his fellow immigrants. So Jones fled north. Upon the suggestion of Lutheran friends in the north, Jehu Jones settled in Philadelphia as a missionary to African Americans in our first capital. He got to work, starting churches immediately, and in 1834 started St. Paul's Evangelical Lutheran Church in Philadelphia. This was a free congregation where black Lutherans could worship without being segregated to back pews away from white members of the assembly. Boldly, Jehu Jones had taken on great personal risk and debt obligations to make sure that his congregation could build a building in which they could worship freely. Yet, his creditor soon came calling. Jehu Jones ap appealed to the Pennsylvania Lutheran Synod for help. <laughs> In a scene that I have seen play out similarly in, at church meetings nearly 200 years later, instead of helping this unique mission to the un, un, um, underserved and poor African-American Lutherans in Philadelphia, Jehu's white Lutheran colleague, colleagues quibbled over whose name was and should be on the deed. While they quibbled, hemmed, and hawed, his creditors kept knocking and stepping up the pressure for loan repayments. As you can imagine, in antebellum America, his African-American congregation was too poor to pay their way out from under the building debt. And unfortunately, neighboring Lutheran congregations were unwilling to help in their time of need. Five years after building St. Paul's, the first African-American Lutheran church in the United States, they were forced to sell their building. Still, though they had taken on great risk and service to the gospel, but failed to retain their building, the congregation remained largely intact. Homeless as a community of faith, St. Paul's Evangelical Lutheran Church continued to worship as a congregation. And Jehu Jones Jr. remained their pastor. <clears throat> Though he was underpaid by the people he served, underappreciated by his Lutheran colleagues, and I, a minority within a religious minority at the time, always I guess, Jehu continued to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and give hope to the downtrodden. He invested all that he had to the mission which God had called him to in Philadelphia. And though he had suffered great material setbacks in service to this mission, he continued to preach to oppressed Lutherans in Philadelphia until his death in 1852 at the age of 66. I have no doubt that when he joined the faithful departed, our Lord said to him, 
Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Reverend Jehu Jones, Jr. lived the parable for today. At, a, at nearly every turn, the world around him would have him turn back and bury his gifts in the ground until our Lord returned. But he never strayed in his mission to take the gifts of the gospel, the good news of our salvation, and share it with some of the poorest and most oppressed in antebellum America. It would have been easier for him to just give up, turn away, and bury his gifts for ministry in the ground. But instead, he persevered and continued to spread the gospel until the end. He would not be deterred in sharing his hope in the resurrection. And he is an example worth following. May Jehu's example be a light for all of us as we continue to share the gospel of Jesus Christ to our neighbors in our own lifetimes. May we never forget that the gospel is always worth sharing, no matter the cost. May the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Yeah.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended to the dead. The third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. <laughs> Show each other signs of peace. <laughs> now receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
But courage will come with the sound of your steps by my side. And with all of the family you saved by your love, we'll sing to your dawn at the end of our journey. We'll sing to your dawn at the end of our journey. We'll sing.